sunlight fall away Street lights guide me They show me the way Oh, oh, oh Take my hand I'll lead you home Escape our fate And walk along
guys. Family friends, we are gathered here in the presence of the Almighty God to unite this man and this woman in holy matrimony. Both Corey and Emily have come stating their love for each other as well as their desire to be married. So I have to ask the question right up front, who gives this woman to be married to this man? Awesome. You all may be seated. Awesome. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, love has always been your greatest and richest gift to the world. Father, love between a man and a woman that, uh, that matures itself into a marriage, into what we're experiencing today, is one of the most beautiful types of that love. Father, we thank you for this example. We thank you for Corey and Emily. We pray a special blessing, Father, not only over this day, but ultimately over their marriage. Father, we pray that through the power of the Holy Spirit, that was welcomed in through Jesus Christ, that you, uh, you guide them, you comfort them, and you strengthen them every day of their life. Father, we love you. We give you all the glory on this day. It's in your mighty name that we pray. Amen. So I want to start in the beginning, literally the beginning. So in the beginning of the Bible, it's Genesis, which means the beginning. It says that God created the heavens and the earth. In the verses to follow, it says that he created the sun the stars, the moon, the planets, and the living animals. And after he did, he said, it is good. And then he created man, which was Adam. And for the first time, he said, this is not good. Man, it only took a chapter and a half for God to realize we're in trouble. So in Genesis 2.22, this is what it said. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he'd taken out of man, and he brought her to the man. And then he said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. In verse 24, it goes on to say, this is why a man leaves his mother and his father and united to his wife, and they become one flesh. I say all this to say that marriage was God's design from the very beginning. In Psalm 139, 1 and 2, King David, he writes this. He says, you have searched me, Lord. You have known me. You know when I sit, you know when I rise, you perceive my thoughts from afar. What an amazing thought that we have a God that knows each one of you intimately. In verse 4, he goes on to say, before a word is on my tongue, you know it, Lord. So he knows every word you're going to say before you even say it. Verse 13, he says, for you created my innermost being, you knit me together in my mother's womb, which means he made you exactly to be who you are today. There are no mistakes. At verse 16, he follows it up with, Your eyes saw me, my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. So God knows the day you were born. He knows the day you're going to pass, and he knows every day in between. Bottom line was marriage was not only God's design from the very beginning, but this particular marriage was on God's calendar before time ever began. That's an awesome thought. This is a holy God-ordained moment. It's serious. This is more than he's a stud and she's hot. Like, much more than that. So, Corey, you're about to become a husband. And one of the most definitive verses in all of Scripture on our two husbands is from the Apostle Paul to the church of Ephesus in Ephesians 5.25. Here's what he says. He says, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ has loved the church and gave himself up for her. 
You are to love her as Christ loved the church. There's no exception clause here, brother. You're to love her on her best of days, and you love her on her worst of days. Emily, you're about to become a wife. And in Ephesians 5.33, it says, However, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. Well, what does that look like? What is respect? When well, Proverbs 31, 10 through 12, King Solomon wrote most of Proverbs. But in 31, the last chapter, his mother actually wrote this. She said, A wife of noble character who can find. She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. The Bible says when a man finds a woman like this is worth more than anything else the world has to offer. So essentially what Solomon's mom saying is, hey, if you want to marry my son, if you want to be a, a noble a wife, this is what it calls for, to respect your husband unconditionally. Here's the key thing, though. To love Emily unconditionally, to respect Corey unconditionally, is almost impossible. I would say impossible. That's why I'm so excited as your pastor to know that you guys have put the foundation in Jesus Christ and know to lean on him when those days come, because they're going to come, when the storms come, and they're going to come to lean on him when it's hard to respect him, when it's hard to love her. Amen? So, Corey, you can actually hand that to Casey there. You guys can join hand. Do you take Emily to be your lawfully wedded wife? Do you promise to stand by her for better or worse, for richer or for poor, in sickness and health, to love, honor, and cherish her, forsaking all others? Be faithful only to her for as long as you both shall live. And Emily, do you take Cora to be your lawfully wedded husband? Do you promise to stand by him for better or worse, for richer or poor, in sickness and health, in love, honor, and cherish him, forsaking all others? Be faithful only to him for as long as you both shall live. Awesome. You can come this way. But this time, Corey and Emily will assemble the Unity Cross, which is just a beautiful sculpture that uh, they'll be able to display in their home just to remind them of the covenant that they're making today. See, in Genesis 1, chapter 1, we read that God created man in his own image. That means that he created man to be bold, strong, to be a leader, to be a protector of his wife and his family. So the outer form of the Unity Cross represents the strength, leadership, and protection of the man. The man who is to love his wife as Christ loved the church. As well, Genesis in chapter 2 tells us that the woman was taken from the man. The bride's piece of the unity cross represents the beauty of the many capabilities of the woman designed with intricate, beautiful detail and is placed inside the protection of the groom's cross, complementing the sculpture and representing the two becoming one. To complete this sculpture, I'll take one. We are placing three pegs to hold them together. These pegs represent the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They also represent Corey, Emily, being united together with God and Jesus Christ as their foundation. Awesome. The scripture tells us that three-stranded cord is not easily broken. <laughs> and Matthew 19 5 and 6 says this, For this reason a man shall leave his mother and father, be united to his wife, and the two become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. This is Jesus speaking here. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. All right, you got the rings, man? Good deal. All right, the wedding ring is a symbol of eternity. It is an outward sign of an inward and spiritual bond which unites two hearts and, an inward, and an, excuse me, an endless love. And now as a token of your love and your deep desire to forever be united in heart and soul, you, Corey, may place a ring on the finger of your bride, soon to be bride, and repeat after me. 
with this ring, with this ring I, thee wed, I thee wed, and pledge my love and life to you from this day forward. Love and life to you from this day forward. There you go, brother. <laughs> All right, Emily, and you repeat after me. <laughs> with this ring, I thee wed, and pledge my love and life to you from this day forth. Beautiful. Awesome. You guys ready? You've been ready, haven't you? Awesome. Because of you have taken these vows in the sight of God, and these who are witnesses by the power vested in me by the state of Illinois, and as a gospel or minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I now pronounce you to be husband and wife. Corey, you may kiss your bride. Mr. and Mrs. Corey Wisdom. Kids when we fell in love 
not knowing what it was I will not give you up this time Darling, just take my hand Take my whole life too for I can't help falling in love with you. Well, I found a woman. I got a feeling that tonight's gonna be a good night. That tonight's gonna be a good night. That tonight's gonna be a good, good night. A feeling that tonight's gonna be a good night. That tonight's gonna be a good night. That tonight's gonna be. And Amy and Rick Simon, thank you for everything that you did to help this a wonderful event. And one of my favorite songs is getting ready to play. It's We Are Family. And I want everybody to come out because we are going to dance. Let's go.
this evening. So how, how do you know the bride and groom? Well, he tried to play baseball with me one time, and that's all I know. He tried. <laughs> well, you know, I kind of know Corey from way back yeah, when. I knew. Oh, I thought you were going to And he was kind of a little shit. <laughs> but he's a good guy now. So, how do you know the bride and groom? Why am I doing this? This is probably the well, end of the movie. The groom is my brother. <laughs> no way. And the bride is now my sister in law. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> and how do you know the bride and groom? Hello, I am the beautiful bride's cousin, and I am the groom's neighbor and high school grad. How do you know the bride and groom? You know, I uh, met them a couple years ago. Where, where's the camera even going from? So, Up there, we're watching you dance. You look so great. Woo! We're next. We're next. No. <laughs> Tristan and Mom, how do you guys know the bride and groom? Emily is my cousin. Emily is my cousin. She's awesome. And I love Corey. You guys will be great Woo! together. One of my favorite people in the whole world, Kathy, is the family of the kids. So I love both of them so much. And you are? And I am Papa Jack. And I'm in Georgia. Yeah. And I love them both very much. Yay! Cheers! Congrats! Congrats! We're happy for you! This is Cousin Greg. Do the hair guitar. Woo! <laughs> And we're all Christmas angels, so. Now get back. Get back. Zach, how do you know the bride? How do you know the bride? Oh, we rolled around in diapers. Yeah. Baby buddies. Baby buddies. Sandy and Danny, how do you know the bride? Oh, just met them earlier today. Diapers and Sandy. Oh, I love my cousin Emily. Yay. My beautiful niece. Woo! And Corey won the Big Bob tournament. 